everyone, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek, and I'm sitting down with Ronja Lodapak from Pegasus Spiele. And you've brought us a familiar title to many, Hansa Teutonica, which re released quite a few years ago. But now you've got a big box edition, so I'm excited to see what's all now all going to come packed together in a single solitary, nice chunkier box than before. Yes, we are very excited to bring this uh, to the gaming community again. <laughs> Well, uh, the first time it was published, it was by a little publisher called Agentum Verlag. Uh, and actually, it was the first game for their editor, Klaus Ottmeier, which, who, funnily enough, is now our chief editor for games. And uh, so it is actually his second time working on Hansa Teutonica. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, we uh, just thought it would be cool to have everything in one big nice box uh, so that players can play the various uh, different maps that are actually available. Um, of course, there's the regular map, which is the German Hanse Gebiet, which is in northern, or which was in northern Germany. And then there's also the Eastern Hanse, uh, which is like uh, Eastern Europe, which has some waterways, uh, a special uh, um, areas and then there's also the Britannica board which has uh, England and Wales on the three player side and England, Wales and Scotland on the four and five player side uh, and this is also this also comes with some special rules because um, to build in Wales or in Scotland you need like a permission to go there and so you can only do some limited uh, trade actions or, or trading outpost actions in uh, in those areas which requires uh, a different approach to the game than just the German region does. So that's that's really exciting and gives you a lot of replay value in, in one box because you've got the three different maps already. And why don't we give a quick overview of just the turn structure of what people are trying to accomplish. I'm sure there's people watching who haven't played Hansa Teutonica who might maybe have familiar with the title but maybe don't know exactly how to play. So let's just give take about five minutes and just kind of go do a quick walkthrough of how to play the game. Okay, yeah, sure. So you go turn by turn. Um, there, once you start the game, it just goes clockwise on the table. And um, you can do different actions in your turn. Uh, actually, on your player board, you have an area which is called Aktiones. This is in the top right of your player board. Uh, at the beginning, there's only the leftmost space uh, empty. And this tells you that you can do two actions on your turn. Yeah, thank you, Lincoln. Um, and during the game, you can unlock uh, this area to gain more actions every round. Um, and these actions are to actually get more traders or merchants from the bank um, to place one trader or merchant on an empty space on one of the trade routes on the board um, to push off the trader or merchant from a different player to take his space instead. Um, and it can be to establish a trade route, which you can only do if you control all the spaces on the trade route. That's the spaces between two cities. And once you do that, you can uh, place one of these uh, traders, which are the wooden cubes or the merchant, which are the wooden discs, uh, in one of the neighboring cities in the uh, available spaces for an outpost. You have to fill these from left to right in each city. Um, and there's also some cities which allow you to um, actually unlock something on your player board instead of building a trade outpost in one of the cities. Um, and the things you can unlock are, as I already mentioned, having more actions, um, having the opportunity to gain more traders from the bank when you recruit new traders. Uh, it can be to uh, gain privileges which allow you to go on the colored spaces in the city because in the beginning you can only have trade outposts on the white spaces and you need to gain privileges in orange, pink and black to go on the other spaces later on in the game. Um, and then there's the city keys which will give you more points at the end of the game for the longest route you have of connected trading posts. So these are the things you unlock. Um, also, there's one, there's one more in the middle, actually, of your player board, um, which is the only way to get new merchants, which are the round disks uh, in the middle. 
um, they are more valuable than the traders. And if you um, unlock these, you not only gain the merchant, but you can only uh, you can also move more uh, of your traders and, me uh, and merchants on the board. Because another action you can do, except for placing a, a trader or uh, pushing off a trader or uh, building a trade uh, outpost or uh, recruiting new ones, is to move those you already have on the board. So say you started at two different trade routes, but some of your opponents cut in. And you think, okay, I'm going to redistribute them across the board on empty spaces to, to uh, be more effective, then that's the action you need. So uh, at the beginning, you can only ever move two merchants at a time, but later on, it can be three, four, or five with that action unlocked. So what you're trying to do is, um, at one hand, build outposts, ideally from the west to the east in a connected uh, line, but also um, built in those areas where you can get special uh, actions to uh, unlock the areas on your player board. Um, and also at the very bottom, there's uh, Köln, Koellen written on the board, and this gives you extra points at the end of the game. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different things to do, but actually every turn will be very quick because you only do like yeah. two, three, four things. And some of these can only be can be, for example, you set down three traders and that's it. And then the next player's turn is and he will maybe recruit some traders and then uh, put one of them down and then it's the next player. So it, it's really quick, even though you have a lot of, to think about what you want to do. Now, you already mentioned that here in the big box, it includes the Britannia map and the uh, Eastern expansion map. Does it also include the Emperor's Favor? expansion as well yes it does uh, there's literally as much as far as i know there's literally any uh, everything in this box that i was ever published for hansa teutonica anything new that's published in this box that it has never been released before is it just a a summation of everything that came previously uh no so far it's a summation there's there's no new content unfortunately um, but of course, we are thinking about what we what we maybe can do in the future with this game because we know it's it's still very popular outside, uh, well, in in the community and uh, well we'll see. But there's no new content. The only thing maybe I should mention that um, are the bonus markers. Um, in the original German version, there were I believe 16, and then later on there was an English version by Siemen Games which had 15, and we stuck with that. Um, so we decided to go with the 15 bonus markers as well, because the designer and our editor were in agreement that this way the tokens are more balanced. Um, but there are two um, empty ones, so you can actually make up your own uh, bonus markers if you like. Um, <laughs> and also we dropped the two player variant, which they felt wasn't very good anyway, so it's only three to five players now. but it's. The best way to play so uh, there was actually just a, a question in the chat about that like oh how come the two-player variant didn't make it in because it wasn't balanced enough it wasn't go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now i noticed uh that at least in the credits on the game page for bgg uh that the original artist is credit again uh dennis lahansen um was it looks like he took a little bit of an amalgam of of is it completely new cover art or did he just repurpose some of the other art that he had previously? No, I think it's actually completely new art. I, I don't have the original uh, one here, but I think it looked actually quite different from what it looks now. Uh, but that's the only bit of art that was changed. So the boards and, and tokens and stuff, all that remains the way it is and the way the players know it. Only the cover is, is new and from, at least in my eyes, it, it's much more pretty now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a conversation that we've been having with uh, some other publishers about there's a there's a fine line between wanting to just reprint a game and then wanting to give it a bit of a refresh that could be either yeah. through packaging it as a big box, it could be through refreshing the artwork. Sort of where do you feel like this falls in that spectrum of sort of completely retooling it? It's still the same game, but it looks completely different it's towards just reprinting it, what you had before. Yeah, well, it, it still looked the same for like 90% of, of what's in, the, well, 
actually everything that's in there still looks the same. It's really just the cover, um, which we felt was also kind of necessary because the game was 11 years old now, I think. And so it had to, it had to look new for people who didn't know yeah. it, I think. Um, just to, you know, that they don't get a feeling that this is something very old. Uh, and and not modern anymore, not fun maybe anymore because it's so old. Because you you might have that with older games that if you get to play them now, you find out that they're not as good as mo more modern games. But this one is just still awesome. It's really really a great yes. game uh, even after ten years. Uh, and so with a with a new cover, I think new players will will be drawn to this as well and find out that this is still a great game. Yes, I just checked the date on you. Yes, it is 11 years old. And I'm thinking, isn't that funny that 11 feels old in board game terms? I was thinking my car is older <laughs> than this game. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's like a thousand new games every year and you don't buy a new car every month. That so. is an excellent point. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. Well, I and think let's... game development changed a lot in the last... 10, 20 years, so. I mean, I think you definitely have a, a point that the, certainly the graphic style has changed over the last decade that people are looking for covers that, and I'm, and I'm only talking about the cover, honestly. It's sort of a different story when we're talking about rule books and boards and things, but there's a much deeper, richer palette. People are looking for things that are very dynamic nowadays. So I, I think it was a really wise, yeah, wise move to, to yeah, to, to give that cover a fresh new pop. But what I love is that, because I just went back and I was comparing them side by side, that there's still the the man in the center, the, the man with his red hat. So, yeah, he still evokes yeah. the original cover without copying it, which I think was just perfect. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about availability, because um, also, you know, the, the, the demo that Lincoln happens to have in front of him is in German, but the game really is language independent completely. So um, how is the international gaming community going to get their hands on this? Right. So uh, it's, it's on their way to our German warehouse right now. Um, so it's scheduled to, to reach us in November. And then we're going to ship part of it to the US to our distributors there. So I think uh, in Europe, you can get it towards the end of November. Uh, and in the States, I think probably December. Now, is there? But, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bilingual version. Yeah, so the components, as you said, are, are language independent, and the rule book is German and English included. Yeah. Now, are there any plans for development for new content? If that if that's something you can share, um, is there any desire to I, I honestly, continue? I, I honestly don't know, but I actually talked to the uh, editor about this uh, the day before yesterday, because like now that we have Hansa Teutonica, there's so many possibilities. We could, of course, do new maps. Um, but also we're thinking about maybe it would be cool if we could somehow manage to get the feeding of Hansa Teutonica, but like as a, as, an, um, as a dice game, maybe not like a simple dice game, but uh, I could, could imagine this like as a, as a roll and write maybe where you have to fill up your own map or something. So we're definitely toying with the idea of, of doing more for this. Uh, but of course, in the end, it's the designer who has to say, yes, I have an idea and I want this or to say, no, I think everything is perfect the way it is and I don't want anymore. <laughs> but too, it's too early to say. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there anything else? Uh, well, please if, talk about Hansa Teutonica as much as you want. But is there anything else also from Pegasus that you wanted to share that is either coming up for later 2020 or even projects that you're willing to talk about that might be released for 2021? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think I have to tell you guys too much about Hansa Teutonica because people watching Board Game Geek probably already know about the game. Uh, <laughs> I hope. I hope. Um, <laughs> I hope. Uh, but yeah, we've got several other games coming up. We just published the next uh, Undo game, which is all standalone games where you jump through time and try to solve uh, or to, to undo 
as the game says, a, a, a murder or a death. And actually in the new one, you have to save an entire group of people. So every choice you make will directly uh, influence one of the people in, an, in a mountaineering group. Um, and this should be available in the US, I think that in November. Um, then we have my farm shop coming up, which should have been released in May, but things got delayed, unfortunately. And so this should be out, I think, in January. And this is a family game where you have to build up your own farmer's market and, and uh, produce different goods and sell them and win the game by having the most money in the end. But of course, this is all very uh, animal friendly, what we are doing in this game. <laughs> um, and then there's also a game coming up, which I think is really cool called, uh, wait, let me think. Yes, it's Spy Connection now. It used to be Web of Spice. It's Spy Connection now. Um, and this plays in, in Europe, in like the original James Bond area. <laughs> era. <laughs> uh, so, so more Cold War uh, design. And um, you have to build routes across Europe to reach different cities um to complete your missions there and this is also fa family friendly but uh it just I, I really like where we how we how the design turned out with uh with this more like 60s 70s look um and you have these agent meeples with their collars up and stuff so uh i think that's gonna be a lot of fun is your background happen to be themed to uh, uh, the upcoming spy game? <laughs> uh, not really, no. But uh, happy coincidence! From, happy coincidence! It's actually from a detective from Portal Games, for which we do the German version. Uh, and we, we had this, and we thought it was a nice background. It's a great background. <laughs> so, so we use it for our uh, <laughs> for our online uh, appearance during Spiel Digital. There's been a, a, a couple musings in the chat wishing that perhaps there could be an AI or solo version for Hansa Teutonica, pondering if that could ever okay. be a possibility. So I will pass that along to you to pass to along to. I, I can certainly mention that to our editor. I, I'm not sure how to do this because one of the appealing things is that you constantly get in the way of each other. Yeah. Um, and, and block each other and try to actually profit from blocking the other player because he has to make you go away, which gives you uh, an advantage because you gain a trader when he does that. Um, I don't know how well you we could simulate that with mm -hmm. an, an AI that is, uh, I, I don't know, a deck of cards or something. We'll have to think about it, but something. I can mention it. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Not surprisingly, uh, that I was gonna, there's a great comment. Give the chat five minutes and they'll find you a solution. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sure, of course. If you've got ideas, just uh, send them our way and we'll pass them to our editor. <laughs> hey, you've got a captive audience. You might as well use their creative ideas and uh, you know say, yeah, that's. <laughs> well, also, Rhonda, anything else? Could, could do to Hansa Teutonica. So if you've got any ideas, any maps you think would be really cool to play with this or something, let us know. I'm interested in this. We are interested in this. So, Yeah, and, and if you have any ideas, you can certainly put it in the chat right now. Or Rhonda, do you have like a good, like a kind of a contact us email that if people are interested in just saying, hey, I think this is a great idea, do they have a way to pass along a feeling? Uh, to yeah, Pegasus sure. you, can, you could uh, actually use it. Uh, you can use our email address, which is uh, marketing at pegasus.de. And that's uh, an, a mail address I check every day. So I will see it if you're right there. <laughs> well, in Rhonda, in our final minute here, is there anything else that you wanted just to share coming up, either you know, for Pegasus, for you yourself? Mm, I think, I don't think anything else. Well, um, yes, we actually have our own live stream um, and there will be English content for this today in like four hours, I think it starts. So if you want to check that out, you can go to twitch.tv slash Pegasus Spiele. Uh, we'd be happy if you drop by. Um, there'll be fun things to, to see and talk about. So that's, that's 
that would be wonderful if you came by. But of course, I can also understand <laughs> if you want to remain with the board game you live stream because I know this is just high quality and brilliant. <laughs> Well, Ranja, thank you as always for taking the time. I know it's later in the day for you where you are right now. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited that Hansa Teutonica is now getting that refreshed because it is such a, it's, it's a testament that after 11 years, it still continues to sell well. So I'm really happy that it's got a new box, a new cover, everything combined into one, uh, one package for hopefully a new audience to enjoy. So thank you again for giving us a quick tour of what you can find in the box. Mm -hmm.